Okay, a new unboxing. Uh, actually, it's a new unboxing, but what's inside is not new. That is for sure. Uh, this is from, uh, found this on, I believe, eBay. It's from Germany. And it's auto art slot cars. So, uh, what's inside is something I've been looking for for quite some time. But anyway, let's open it up and take a look. See if I can see how this opens. It looks well packaged. Came from Germany. Was here within a couple weeks, which is always great. That uh, the shipping does not take long coming from another country. I really could have picked a better knife for this. This is having a heck of a time. Slowly getting into this. Here we go. Oh, I see. It's two boxes inside a box. Well, this is the great thing about this is that uh, I found this at a super deal because I've seen this car many times and, uh, well, I had an actually had a hard time looking for it, but anytime I did find it, it was very expensive. This was a great deal. Oh, let's take a look. Looking good. Wow, it's just well packaged. Uh, can we see this? Yeah. Um, let me see if I can get tape off. Wow, it's all so well. Don't want to damage what's inside. This is a car I've been looking for for a long time. Uh, I know Artwork came out with this in about 2009, and I hadn't seen one. Couldn't buy one locally. And had a hard time finding. Anyways, it's a beautiful looking car. Super happy with this. I will take a break here and open this up and take a really good look at it and give it a track test. So here it is. This is the Auto Art uh, Jaguar XK120 C Type. And it is a beauty. This is the 1953 Le Mans 24-hour winner uh, by the drivers Tony Rolt and Duncan Hamilton. So beautifully done, incredible wire, uh, wire wheels here, extremely nice, one of the betters I've ever seen. Uh, all the details really, really good. Uh, very nice. What's cool, this uh, cover over the uh, driver's side is rubber, and if you, you almost can peel that back, and that detail over on that side is fantastic. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, the only major complaint I have is the size of the driver. Looks very tiny for the size of the car. And for 132nd scale, if I take another driver, uh, looks much better, uh, more in scale, a little larger. Uh, just uh, gives that better look. And if I take another one, this one might be just slightly bigger than the last. But anyways, i got to swap out that driver at some point. Just getting the right one with the right helmet and uh, racing outfit for 1953. Now, one of the issues I've seen others comment on this car is the license plate, which is common uh, in sports car racing in Le Mans that uh, the cars are driven on the road to the track and such. Uh, that this is incorrect, the number's right, but uh, it's white on red. And if we take a look at the book that we have here, here's this exact same car, and it uh, looks like black on white. So not sure why the color error on that. But anyways, here's how important this uh, particular Jaguar is, is that here's a book on Jaguar, the Sporting Heritage, and it's featured on the cover. So the XK120 C type uh, is really one of the beginning and most successful of the Jaguar sports racing cars. If we go inside this book and take a look, uh, here's a beautiful shot of uh, that car uh, in vintage racing, but done really nicely. I mean, if we take a look, if we can compare, if I can get any focus on there, uh, how nicely this is done up 
to the real car. Super nice. Uh, this is a good wood. You can tell by this chicane here. Uh, great race for uh, vintage racing. And all. this is definitely a featured car. So a beautiful book all on the history of uh, the C-Type. Uh, it did start uh, the year before. It was relatively successful, but really came onto its own in uh, 53. And if we take a look through here a bit more, lots of great shots, action shots, and a great written history here of the development of the car. Here's a fantastic shot here of uh, the winning car in action, uh, just going past the pits. So very, very nice. And again, we can see just that discrepancy on the uh, license plate that's painted onto the front of the car. Now, other books. I've got a number of uh, older books. Uh, this one here, The Le Mans Story. I'm not sure what year is this book published. Uh, let me see. 1954. Yeah, 1954. So oh, this is a reprint in 55. So another excellent book on uh, the history of Le Mans. Here's 1953. And look at this two color, uh, two page spread or two panels here of uh, that exact number 18 winning car and a really nice rear angle on that. And again, you can see uh, that discrepancy of uh, color choice or, uh, you know, the reversal of those numbers, letters on uh, that background of the license. But other than that, very, very nice, very nicely detailed, beautiful, beautiful done. But take a look at this picture and take a look at the size of the driver on the car here. Uh, yeah, it, it, he's way too small. Let's see, we got another one in here. Is another shot way at the back. Another beautiful picture of that car coming around the bend. Excellent. Uh, talking about the uh, car being successful in 52, even though this is the, the motor yearbook 53, it is the uh, review of the 52 season. And there's a crashed version, Sterling Moss at uh, Monaco sports car race and there was a pileup. I do have more pictures of that elsewhere and then here we've got that same car at at Reams. Okay. Uh, another great book on Le Mans. Uh, this is a nice little series that I picked up. They have a number of key races and this one here there we go. There's that number 18. And it has a great write-up on the race and the winners. Auto course. That's a uh, you know, very collectible hardback uh, annual that started in 6061 as a hardcover book. But throughout the 50s, it was a magazine. And I happen to have one of those rare issues here. Uh, crazy how expensive... Uh, the early auto course hardbacks and even these magazines these go for at least a hundred dollars Canadian a piece if you can even find them uh, this has uh, some nice articles here Sterling Moss ready uh, to take off in the Milmiglia uh, in that Jaguar fantastic and let me see there is a sequence in here if I can find it oh that's where the tag fell out um, let's see. I'll just take a minute if I can locate it. There we go. Here's a sequence of uh, Sterling Moss at the top picture there. Sterling Moss just getting involved into that pileup into the corner at Monaco. And we got a whole sequence of events of that accident. And that's where we saw that picture in the other book of the uh, and that's pretty much it here. There's that Sterling Moss car starting to take off with the, the damage on the front end. So great re uh, race reports and such in all of these books. Really, really nice. And then we have uh, Automobile Year, great hardcover book. They did these specialty publications, and this one is all on the 24 Hours of Le Mans uh, race. And here they go. Here's the 53 uh, race season and here's a great shot of the team uh, coming around at Le Mans and there's that winning car 18 
because the car in front had uh, ran into some problems and let 18 through and for those winners that uh, take the laurels and here we go here are the winners there's uh, on the left is uh, Tony Rolt and right here in the middle this is Duncan Hamilton the winners of the 1953 Le Mans all right there we go fantastic next we'll get it on the track and see what kind of a runner this is before we put the car on the track uh, I want to take a look at the mechanics a bit because I did have one issue that was relatively easy to fix but when you look underneath the car um, motor location uh, in the front which I always like that's what I liked about fly cars they were the first to introduce motors being realistically placed and putting them in the right spot also makes for a full cockpit and driver which is something I always really appreciate there is a magnet back here not overly strong but effective three screws one in the back two on either side and when you open it up it is kind of the top is tethered although it's got a little quick release there for lights and it does have very strong lights in the front and back although you really got to get full power for them to come on now the only issue i had mechanically with this car is this gearing back here uh, you can see the the rear axle gear is two colors and this black is a separate piece and what i found when i initially tried to run this car this would pop away from the white gearing uh, meaning that uh, it wasn't locating the pinion and this gear wouldn't mesh so i went about with my super glue uh, gluing the uh, black part to the white and it just wouldn't adhere being nylon gearing uh, it really repelled any kind of glues so I ended up after several tries end up gluing it to the axle itself and now I've had no problems and have a really good gear mesh and actually runs really really well so it does have the brass uh, fittings here as well as on the axle and uh, nice period tires tread uh, as well although it's starting to wear away as I sand things but uh, very very nice but let's get it on the track and see how it performs with that fix so here's our Auto Art Jaguar XK120 or just C type along with the uh, Carrera D type. So very uh, similar cars in that one came a year after the other and more refined and was just as successful. But anyways, let's uh, now that we've fixed our gear, got the car back together, let's give it a go. Motor's ready to 12 volts. But I've got it cranked up to 14. Makes it more lively and a lot more fun to drive. All in all, it's a great little car. Highly recommend it. Auto Art. Uh, not always the best reputation, but I gotta say, this one uh, exceeded my expectations and really gave very little issue. And I think it's a great runner and a beautiful and well produced car. Now, I've seen the real thing at uh, vintage races, particularly the Lime Rock, uh, when was it, 2012, and uh, I have a series of pictures. Enjoy! Enjoy!